All right, so as you can see here, I've started a new uh, part file, new sketch, and I'm gonna go to the add-ins tab, and since I'm using Inventor 2016 R2, notice the new force effect panel, and from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click new, and it's gonna load force effect, kind of in the background, but it's gonna load force effect in here, so that I'm actually working with force effect within the inventor window. So I don't need to leave it. You know, I don't have to pull out the smartphone. I don't need to pull out the iPad or, or my tablet or my Surface or whatever device I want. I can do it right inside of an inventor. Now if I start here and I go over to the samples tab here, so you can see the help section. The help section is actually really good. Um, some you know quick tutorials. I, I recommend going through them just because you get some kind of tips and tricks through it and it, it is easy to use but you'll even get even more efficient at it. So you can see in this case what they did is they took a picture of a bridge, loaded that in the background, they created their elements, their, their supports, they applied their loads, and then let force effect calculate the reaction forces and, and kind of what they're, what they're going to expect. So let's go back to the one I created. Notice I can do statics, I can do kinematics. The difference here as you can see is that there's some additional tools get loaded in when I flip to kinematics. Now I'm going to keep it simple this first time here. I'm going to do statics. And I could start with you know just a great background. I could start with engineering paper. I'm going to select a file because what it is, I took a picture with my phone, and what I did is I uploaded it to A360. Since it's up in A360, I can actually select it directly with an inventor, and we can see now that it's loaded that image in there for me to start. Now I'm going to start creating elements, so we can see that I can create elements. Um, I can also create construction elements. So the difference is is that the construction elements are ignored when it comes time to start calculating the the results on that. So they are true construction objects. So maybe what I'll do is I'll start with a construction object across the bottom here, and I'm going to say, well, you know, that's really should be 60 inches long. And notice that it didn't actually change in length because the first element, you're kind of setting the reference for the rest of the objects. So that construction line made it 60 inches, that set the reference for the rest of the design. So now when I come in here and add this next one, it's all kind of in, in scale with that first one. Now notice that there is snapping here. So you notice it's snapping to the endpoint of that line, kind of object snap tracking. It'll snap vertical, snap horizontal. So I'm able to, to quickly place those in there. Now notice the dimension here, I'm gonna click on it, I'm just gonna make that 130, just to make that a little bit cleaner. But at any point in time, I can come back to it and I can actually pick that object and notice how, how easy it is for me to go in there and say, well, this really should have been 131, and we can see that it's updated in length. Okay, what else do we need here? Well, we actually need one from here, and I'm gonna snap it um, into here. We'll leave that, that length the way it is. And then what I'd also want is I want another one that goes across here and it actually snaps into place there. So we've got our objects um, the way we want. If I don't want that one, I could actually pick it and just hit delete on the keyboard and I can remove it because maybe what I wanted to do is I wanted to do it the other way. So I wanted to do something like this so it actually snaps and snaps horizontal. The other thing I can do is I can pick this and when I right click, notice the marking menu. Now those gray boxes that pop up are actually the tool tips. The first time I saw those, I tried clicking them but they're just the tool tips. Um, in this case, what I want to do is I want to change the weight because I'd really like to apply 10 pounds per inch on this and click OK. And we can see that it's applied kind of my first force in there. I've applied a weight. So we can see that the degrees of freedom has changed because we, right now it's saying, oh, I, I know you've done some work here, but there's still not enough information for me to continue here. So let's apply a couple supports here. So we can do pins and we can do um, ground supports and we can do uh, piston supports. I'm going to do a ground support because I want to fix this one, I want to fix that one. And then with that you can see that it's changed to represent that that is actually static. So again, it's telling me here that uh, you know I'm, I'm getting closer but there's still some information it needs. So I'm going to come to this pin here and I'm going to right click on it. Notice I can do welding and standard joints and break elements and I can do sliding joints. In this case let's just weld that and that's given enough information that I have a true static diagram here and notice how the, the reactions are calculated automatically. Now maybe that's not quite all of it, so I'm going to start applying some, some loads here. I can do forces, and I can do unknown forces, and I can do distributed loads, and I can do moments. So I'm going to do a, a force here, and as I drag it, I can actually set the angle and the amount kind of all in one operation here. Now if that's not quite what I want, I can click on it after and say, well this really should have been 100 pounds here. So we'll click OK, and we can see again how everything is, is updated real time.
So it's really that simple. Um, you don't need to have an image. I mean, you could just start sketching without the image, but I was able to use that image as my background. I was able to add my elements. I was able to support them. I was able to apply my loads and instantly got the results. Now, you can see that the, the, the ribbon here is pretty simple. There's not a lot in here. I'm actually gonna save this at this point. So I'm actually gonna save that diagram um, so that you know I can use it maybe in other places, open it later. So I'm actually saving it as a file. And what I wanna do now is I wanna create a report. Now, you know we come to expect this style from really any of the Autodesk um, analysis software. So whether we're using you know simulation mechanical or we're using inventor simulation, you know we come to expect this style of report. So you can see that we're seeing um, the loading, we're seeing the results, and then we get our, our diagrams here across the bottom. So a pretty extensive report is being created for us uh, pretty much instantaneously. All right, so I've created my report. I'm happy with what's going on here. I've got a really good conceptual start here. So I'm gonna click part skeleton within the ribbon. And what it's done now is created a new part file and loaded that in. Now you can see that it's actually placed reference constraints on there. So what it's doing now is actually tying this directly to the force effect um, diagram. So if I edit the sketch here, notice the new force effect panel within the sketching environment, and I can go back and do an edit. So maybe what we want to do is we want to take this one. I want to make a change. I actually want this to be 60. Um, so we can see this change. I did a dramatic change there so we can actually see it. Okay, so I had closed it accidentally there. So let's just change that to, to 60 again. We'll save this. We'll go back to our part. We'll do an update and notice how the geometry is updated. Now I could come in here and I could delete the constraint. So let's delete that constraint. And now notice I've got that object that I can take and I can constrain and dimension within the sketch environment. So by default, you get that skeleton geometry that in a skeleton, because it's referenced, um, you could sketch around it and make your different changes that way. Or you can go in there and break those constraints and then you've got true geometry. So there you have it. That's the um, force effect integration within Inventor 2016 R2.